All right. So today I am interviewing the beautiful Monique Rose Sneak. Um, Monique is a, a multi hyphenate entrepreneur. I will get more into things, but I just kind of want to give just a very brief introduction before we start things. So, Monique, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm great. Very excited. Thankful for a day off of work, girl. So. <laughs> you still working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is true. And look, and that, that brings us right into things. So your motto, outwork everybody. Um, as a multi-hyphenate entrepreneur, you have certainly been doing that. But what brought you to this thought process? I think I've just been doing it my whole life. I got my first job when I was 13 years old. Um, I did that from a desire to stop seeing my mom work so hard, at least for me. Like I was like, let me do something to kind of relieve the pressure from her and let me make some of my own money. And so I just, it's just been a lifestyle for me for a very long time. And it's not just like a hashtag. I know the people that follow me see, I tag that on every post. I work everybody, but it's really truly how I live my life. Like I do try to outwork and people think it's a competition thing but it is but only within myself so that's why I tell everybody mm -hmm. you should outwork everybody too you know what I mean like I always say like nobody will outwork me and I mean that because I'm competing with myself from yesterday I want to you know do something better than I did yesterday I want to make sure that I accomplish more today than I did yesterday so it's not an outward competition it's more about just making sure that you maximize every single day I love that. Maximize every single day. Because in my mind, even when I was thinking about that question and thinking about your motto, I didn't really take it to mean like it was, a you know, a competition with anyone. More right. so like I was curious as to what your thoughts were as it being more so like a competition almost with yourself. So it Absolutely. seems like we're on the same page there. Yes. So. So what do you think are the elements of any successful business in this age? Because, I mean, in 2024, like before, I feel like there was all these rules and thought processes and now it's like things have changed so dramatically you know Absolutely. for entrepreneurship um it has changed um one element that I think you have to have is that you know businesses are good because businesses solve a problem but I think we're moving into a space where you not only have to have a business you also have to have a brand because brands tell a story and that is what people are looking for now that we have so much access on social media and we're seeing the people behind, you know, these companies and mm -hmm. these businesses more. We're being let into their lives more. So I think that's one element that you have to have in any business now that wasn't so much prevalent before is that you really have to tell a story. Like people are, you know, following brands and supporting businesses because of the story now not so much oh I like this thing because there's so much access there there's there's a million of any one thing there's so many mm -hmm. options out there so now it's more, more of a personal thing like now what, what do I connect with who do I connect with and what story do I buy into and who you know what type of person do I want to support um who does this business you know represent those type of things. So I think that that is a major element now that you have to have as a business that wasn't so much an issue before. And then of course, the element of social media, you're insane if you don't utilize something that is free for the most part, you know, to be able to reach an audience and you can reach and talk to so many people that may not even be in your immediate area. So I think those are two things that are key in business today if you're going to be successful. I agree with both of those things. And it's like, um, actually, even with what you said about the brands, it kind of brings me to the next question. But when I was listening to your interview on the Girl Stop Playing podcast, and you mentioned it about um, social media and marketing to people for free, I was like, girl, that was my Girl Stop Playing moment for me. Right. <laughs> because <laughs> I, I, I mean, and it's crazy, but, and I know we're supposed to be on social media, but I'm not going to lie, like, it really affects me mentally. So I had really been taking a step back. And then I, to hear that, it was just like something clicked, like, okay, you know, you've been resting long enough. It's time for you to get back in the game. So right. thank you for that moment there. Oh, no problem. <laughs> I'm glad and I was then, up. <laughs> and so even with what you just said about um, branding and sharing our stories, my next question for you was that you've been in the game for almost 20 years now, um, but it seems like you're just, you know, well, to me, it seems like you're more so stepping into the spotlight during this time. And mm -hmm. is there a reason for that? Or is it because, you know, you also just, had some pivotal moment like where hey you know you realized that it was more about the branding um to be honest with you it's kind of piggybacking on what I, we were just talking about as far as 
you have to tell the story. So it wasn't, I mean, I'm stepping into it more, being in the spotlight, talking, you know, to followers and stuff like that. But it's new to me. It's not, you know, that was by design. I like to be, you know, behind the scenes and just making sure that the business was running like it was supposed to. But again, if we're talking about telling a story, I came to realize that people bought into my story and wanted to hear more of the story. And um, it just felt like I could reach more people when I tell that part of the story. And the only way to do that was to step into the spotlight and be, you know, more open about what I've been through and tell my testimony and say where I'm coming from and really just be a uh, beacon of light to people that, okay, she did this. She had a child at 16. She's from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. She only has a high school diploma. She didn't go to college. If these are the things that she can accomplish, you know, just purely through hard work, then maybe I can do that too. So I think that's why I have kind of leaned into it a little more now because I realize that, you know, it's more impactful when they hear it from the source. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And so out of your out of those years, did you ever feel stagnant at any point? And if so, what did you do? Oh, for many of those years, you know, like I said, I've had a job for 13, <laughs> since I was 13. So, you know what I mean? I'm 44 years old. So that's a long time, a long work history. And many of those years were paycheck to paycheck. And many of those years felt like I was just on a hamster wheel and doing the same thing over and over and over again. And I didn't know how I was going to get off of that hamster wheel. I had no idea, but I always felt like work would intersect with success at some point. You know what I mean? My definition of success, which was some type of freedom. Like to me, that's what money provides is freedom. It's not about the money itself. It's the ability to, you know, be free in my mind and my soul, help my family, not have to worry about so much about so many things. So yeah, that that is that that to me was like, you know, what I had to do in order to be able to keep going because I did feel stuck many, many years. I'm gonna say almost, dang, that's a long time, probably close to 20 years. At some point in time, like, you know, I would feel like you dig yourself out of a hole and then you take a hundred steps back. And I feel like, okay, mm -hmm. I did this. And then something to knock you back down. You know, life happens. You know what I mean? Like, so I'd be ahead and then there's a divorce. I'd be ahead and then I'm moving to Atlanta. I'd be ahead. There's so many times that that has happened, but I always knew there was something on the other side of that. Like I am extremely spiritual and I do believe in God. And I did not think that he would take me through all those things only to just drop me right there and that be the end of it. So, you know, I've felt stagnant many times, but I think the thing is perseverance. You just got to keep pushing through and have faith that, you know, there's something on the other side of this valley. Yeah. And then also with you just talking about, you know, overcoming the, the hurdles and the obstacles um, on the personal side, you've survived domestic abuse, but we know so many women are still suffering silently. What words of encouragement would you share with those women? Oh, don't, don't be silent. That that's where the power and the control comes from. When you're, when you're hiding stuff from people and you don't have a voice, that is why things go on longer than they should. That is why you stay in situations that you should not be in. That is why you allow the continued abuse because you're not speaking up. So I'm not saying, you know, stand on the mountaintop and announce it to the world, but find you somebody that you can trust, that you can talk to. Just start with that one person. Um, start with yourself, even if you have to, like being vocal to yourself, speaking up, even, you know, in the mirror in the morning and just talking to yourself and telling yourself, because most times when you're in those situations, you feel helpless because it's like, how do I get out of this? And then there's a lot of embarrassment and shame, uh, you know, that's attached with uh, abuse as well, too. You don't want anybody to know that you're going through this because it's like, impossible to explain to somebody why you would even allow this to happen to yourself you know what I mean so it's like there's mm -hmm. so much so many layers to that so the only thing I would say is just if you could find somebody that you could at least talk to that's the first thing just talk it through just talk it out and understand that it's never going to be an exact right time to exit everything you're not going to be able to check all the boxes you know what I mean so don't be looking for that like I just left I left Milwaukee with my daughter my son was to follow my dog in a car with our clothes and just went. And I was like, I'm going to figure it out and left behind, you know, a successful business and a bunch of things. But you have to reach a point where you realize that, you know, this is not what I want for myself. For me, my moment was having a daughter and thinking she was going to see me in this type of relationship and think that that is what a relationship was about. And I just couldn't bear that another day. So I had to, you know, I had to get out of there, but I would encourage pray 
and use power, the power of affirmation and manifestation is real and get yourself out of that situation the best way you can. I agree with all of those things. And as someone who has also survived the domestic violence, uh, you know, domestic violence in different relationships and mm -hmm. having a daughter as well, I remember how how they really pulled me, you know, like right. that was something that really just gave me the strength to be able to leave. So I understand totally where you're coming from there. Yeah. So you have a genuine desire to live authentically and to help others. What, what do you think that, or where do you think that stems from? The, the service aspect, helping others, just who I am. I think truly that that is my purpose. Why I've been put on, on this earth is to live a life of service. Um, that's when I feel most fulfilled. That's when I feel most rewarded when I am giving back. And I've also learned, you know, I believe in the power of attraction. I believe. And when you give, the more you give, the more you receive. That's not why I give, but that's just been a wonderful consequence of giving, you know, so much of myself. So um, there's, I don't think there was anything I could have done, you know, differently. That's just who I am as far as giving give me I, I live authentically because I felt like I had to pretend to be something for so long you know in in poor relationships um, when you're in a controlling situation or abusive situation even if it's not physical um, you can't fully be who you are and so now that's why I have decided that I just will you know live life out loud and be who I am authentically and whomever that attracts or whatever that attracts great and those that fall by the wayside and, you know, cannot handle the fullness of me, that's totally fine too, you know? So I think that's why I'm now in a position where I have to live authentic. Like I can't, it feels fake to me to not, cause it is fake to pretend to be something, you know, that you're not. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that's just the way of life for me now. <laughs> and I'm so peaceful and so happy that I finally reached this point. Wow. And so this is our sisterhood issue. What does sisterhood mean to you? Oh my goodness. It means so much. And there's so much outside of just the biological, you know, aspect of it, because I do have a biological sister, but because of the way we were raised and everything, there was no connection there. So I found myself seeking sisterhood out in other places, which is why I created the winter circle, which is a community for women and sisterhood. Um, and not just entrepreneurs, just people that are seeking out again, being able to be fully yourself, without having to dim it down or pretend to be something else, which is why I called it the winner circle, because we want winners. We all want to be winners. And sometimes when you are doing well, when you're in a season in your life that you're doing well, it doesn't fare well for those close to you around you that have seen you in the season where you weren't doing so well. You know what I mean? Like, so when you mm -hmm. kind of cross to the other side, they don't know how to handle that version of you. And oftentimes there is a different version of you because, you know, now you're fully stepping into who God designed you to be. So for sisterhood, for me, is just a safe space, a space to be who you are, to be supported, to feel, um, you know, valued, to feel, um, you know, there's so, just safe. I think it's just a safe space. And I think that we should we should do more of that. We should look for more sisterhood and friendship and view friendship that way. It's not just, you know, oh, that's my homegirl on fly, but like really believe, like, you know, when I say now, you know, when I use the word sister or sister, I truly mean that, like, I feel a, a kinship and a relationship with women who have been through similar situations like me. And I understand how it feels to feel like you don't have anybody. So I hope that we all, you know, at some point in our lives have been a sister to somebody um, because we all need that in return. And can you describe a relationship or experience um, that showed you the value, the value of sisterhood? Oh, absolutely. So many examples that I can think of, mainly just having people who who believe in you, even when you're not even fully seeing where you are. Like I've been in situations where, you know, I've been without a job or been without, you know, money or car being repossessed or any of these things and been surrounded or, you know, not surrounded, meaning a lot of people, but having a few select people, women particularly that will say, you know, this isn't you. You're going to be okay. Like, you know, I had in my lowest point, um, a, a girlfriend that was telling me, you're going to be a millionaire. I'm not even worried about this. If this is happening, God is going to like, and sometimes you need that little reassurance and reminder, you know what I mean? Like of who you are. So it's happened so many times so, with social media. Now I can't lie. Like some days I'll be having a bad day 
or, you know, even to this day, I'm human, things happen. And then somebody will send a message like, man, what you just posted, that helped me so much. Keep doing what you're doing. Those little moments to me is sisterhood. That's a connection and somebody saying, I see you. And I think, you know, as we know, that's all what we all desire to be seen, to be heard and just to, to, to be recognized for who you are. So I think I get examples of sisterhood all the time now. Got it. So how would you describe your swagger? What makes Monique Monique? <laughs> well, now I think really, to be honest with you, I think now is what we were just talking about, that I can be who I am, like fully who I am all the time. So whether you encounter me at my restaurant or you encounter me at the gas station or you encounter me, you know, wherever in life, speaking somewhere or whatever, I get to be who I am all the time. Like, I don't have to cold switch. Like, I don't work in an office where I have to pretend, you know, I'm the only black person, so I have to act this certain way. I don't have to dress a certain way. I can wear a jogging suit one day if I feel like it. I can dress up one day if I feel like, like all of these, I, I fully get to be the spectrum of who I am. So I don't think there's any one thing. I think all of this makes me who I am. The fact that I'm able to be all of those things, that I can read the Bible, that I can twerk, that I can listen to gospel, that I can like fully be whoever I want to be and whoever I feel like being without having to, what do they say? Like cap, there's no cap in it. Like I don't have to front. I don't have to pretend to be something. Like if you see me smiling and happy, I'm really smiling and happy that day. Like that's not just for social media or posting a picture or whatever. Like that's genuinely how I feel. So I think the authenticity is what makes me me, which is funny because that's what makes everybody who they are. And, you know, we try so hard to be somebody else and look like somebody else and do what somebody else is doing when it's so crazy. Like you so dope exactly how you are because nobody can do that better than you. So I wish, you know, especially in this day of social media, that people understood that, like, stop looking at other people and trying to do what they do. Like, just be who you are. And then somebody's going to be looking at you like, damn, I wish I could do that. Yeah. And, and that's very true. So, so um, you've publicly shared that you decided to marry younger this time around. Any advice for other Black women who may be considering this dating pool or dating younger or anything like that? Um, well, first of all, I didn't decide that. It's just who God put into my, I didn't like seek that out. That wasn't, it just so happened that that's, you know, what occurred. He just happened to be a little younger than me. But, um, I think that's the key. Like, if you feel like this is God purpose, that some, you know, that there's a connection there that wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for God orchestrating it, follow that and go with that. Despite if it might not look exactly how you think it's supposed to look, you know, that's why I shared that so that people understand like on paper, it may not look like whatever. I don't know. You know, and I didn't care. You know what I mean? Like, and he didn't care. We knew that this was God ordained and there was no way that we would have met the day that we met at the time that we met and the way that we met if it wasn't for God. So I just say, be open to that and just again, work on you be fully who you are so that you have the power of discernment so that you can understand what to accept, what not to accept, um, what to look for. Trust yourself. You know what I mean? Like we all have been through things. And if you look back at it, you'll say to yourself, dang, I knew, you know, like I, I, I made allowances for this person or I made excuses for this person. If you find yourself doing that a lot, you know, that's not the person for you because the person that God has for you, you won't have to do all that. Like it's just going to just work and it's just going to flow. So if you have to force anything, you know, remove yourself quickly because time is short and you do not have to, you know, stick around just because, you know, society says at this age or at this point in your life, you should be dating or you should be married. You know, it it all happened in God's time. And so um, I think that's why I've been blessed like I have, because had I not just trusted God, I wouldn't be in the marriage that I'm in now. So I think you just got to trust it and go with the flow. I love it. So um, that actually is everything that I needed. Uh, I don't know if there's, any, is there anything else that you'd like to include or? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just make well, it you know, on social media, the money grows, anything. I have so much going on. So I always put a link tree up. I, I appreciate the support. If, if they're in Maryland, they can come to my restaurant there. If they're in Georgia, I have restaurants and businesses there. So um, I just, uh, yeah, just follow me so we can keep up with everything going on. All right. And I'm going to come check out your restaurant. Um, hey. I, it's in Towson, right? Is that what I saw? No, well, Towson is a project that I just took on. I'm I'm revamping an old brand, which was called the Crackpot. So that will be coming up soon. But, um, well, it's actually open now, but I haven't revamped it yet. But no, it's Lacage, and I'm in Camp Springs, Maryland. Where are you? 
Uh, upper Upper Marlboro. Upper Marlboro. So you're close. You're not. You're, that's not too far. So Camp Springs, like Suitland area. So I'm probably depending okay. on where you are, about twenty minutes away from you, depending on where okay. you're. Yeah. So you definitely. Well, yeah. I'm trying to do a um like a little blog series thing called Finding Fancy. So I would love to like come by and you know. So yeah. I don't know if you'll be there or not, but if so, I'll still ask about. Yeah. You no. Let me know. So yeah. Let me know when you're coming because I'm in town often. I would like to be there. Okay. Sure. Well, thank you so much. I'll keep Patrice um updated on everything. She's supposed okay. to send me over some more photos, and um I just wish you all the best. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Have a great Have day. day. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye.